Hi everyone, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and we are bringing you our full review of the new Canon EOS R. EOS R is Canon's first entry into the full-frame mirrorless market, and it also represents their debut of the new RF lens mount. I was able to attend Canon's official press release in Hawaii, get my hands on this camera, and even talk to some of the engineers that designed it, as well as take it out for a spin. This camera is about $2,300, so its competition is Nikon's newly released Z6 and the Sony A7 Mark III, both of which cameras cost just under $2,000. We brought the camera back to our studio for a full review, and I've already had a chance to take it out to two big budget weddings here around Southern California. So in this review, I will talk about what I loved about the Canon EOS R, as well as what I think Canon could do better. Does the camera have enough features to attract amateur photographers, let alone serious professionals? By the way, for those of you who are wondering where this camera sits along Canon's full frame lineup, it's exactly between the 6D Mark II and the 5D Mark IV. It has the fully articulated LCD of the 6D II, but it has the sensor of the 5D Mark IV. Unfortunately, it is lacking some of the professional controls offered by the 5 series. Let's say you're a travel photographer of any kind and you're looking for a lightweight, portable full-frame camera that still has generally good build quality, good weather sealing, and gets great battery life. By the way, I don't know why the spec sheet says that this thing only gets 300 to 400 clicks on a single battery. On average, with general use, I have been getting over a thousand clicks. Last but not least, any Canon shooters who already own a lot of EF lenses and want a seamless adapter experience that doesn't have any compatibility issues at all. All right, let's get to the good part. Here are five things that I think Canon got right with the EOS R. First is the autofocus system. This camera has 5,655 dual pixel autofocus points, which is more than even the 5D Mark IV has. One-shot AF mode is amazing on this camera. It's got face and eye detection that work great. Even in very low light, it just nails focus. It's actually better than any of the DSLRs that I've used. Unfortunately, eye detection is not available when shooting video or in servo AF. Servo AF does have face detection though, and it's great at tracking moving subjects in general. It only starts to falter when the action gets really fast paced. All right, number two, image quality. Like I said before, Canon put the 5D Mark IV sensor in this camera instead of from the 6D Mark II. And that's a great thing because the 5D4 already has a pretty good leap forward in overall image quality. Now, in laboratory tests, the Nikon and Sony have a little bit of an advantage, but honestly, in the real world, you're not gonna notice a difference unless you're really pixel peeping in the deepest, darkest shadows. Meanwhile, if you love Canon colors, those beautiful skin tones, then the EOS R is gonna make you very happy. Number three, there's some amazing new customizations that are possible on the EOS R body, as well as on the whole RF lens system. First, on all of the new RF lenses, they have this command ring that you can program to do anything related to your exposure. You could put your aperture or shutter speed on there, but me personally, I'm a manual exposure shooter, and I've always wanted a third command dial to dedicate to my ISO. So now, Without taking my eye away from the viewfinder or even changing the way my hand holds the camera, I can dial in my ISO. Or if you're shooting in any of the auto exposure modes, you can set it to do EV compensation. And if you're a vlogger, then you can dial in your exposure without having to reach around to the back of the camera. It's right there on the front of the lens. 
Don't forget, by the way, that if you have any EF lenses, the $199 adapter does have that command ring on it as well. Next, on the EOS R itself, and I hope on all future full-frame bodies from Canon, is this new touchpad control dial. You can program both swiping and tapping on either end of the dial. So me, personally, as a portrait and wedding photographer, I'm always changing my Kelvin white balance. So I just programmed swiping left and right to dial up or down, warmer or cooler, my white balance. Then I programmed the tapping on either end to jump to 3000 Kelvin or to 5000 Kelvin, which as a wedding photographer is super useful for me. Number four, the electronic viewfinder and the touchscreen on the EOS R are really great. The EVF has 3.6 million pixels, so not only do you have what you see is what you get for great exposure and color, you also have what feels like zero lag and no shutter blackout when you click a picture. The touchscreen is also beautiful with 2.1 million pixels, which makes live view great, but also if you're shooting with the camera to your eye, you can use your thumb on that touchscreen to move the focus points around the viewfinder, which is great for controlling all 5,000 of those AF points. And by the way, while we're talking about the shooting experience, having that electronic silent shutter is really amazing for shooting in quiet conditions like wedding ceremonies. Last but not least, the new RF lenses are all amazing. I've had a chance to test each of them, the 51.2L, the 24-105 F4LIS, and even the exotic 28-70 F2L, as well as the 35 F1.8 Macro IS. Every single one of them is very, very sharp, even for demanding things like nightscape photography. And by the way, this new 51.2 is amazingly better than the old 51.2 for both general sharpness and also reliably nailing focus in low light. All right, that's my fave five about the EOS R, but we definitely have to talk about things that I think Canon really needs to do better. First and foremost, no dual card slots. A single SD card slot, come on. Now that Sony's A7 Mark III has dual card slots, any camera that's over $2,000 needs to have dual card slots if it wants to be competitive. Next, Canon, where is the in-body stabilization? Sony and now even Nikon have that feature in mirrorless cameras at this price range. Number three, the cropped 4K video. This is a 1.83 crop factor on the EOS R. Nikon's Z6 and all of the Sony A7 line have uncropped full sensor 4K video. So this is gonna be a deal breaker if you're a serious cinematographer. Number four, I have some minor complaints about the button layout. First, I wish the thumb dial was a little bit easier to access with my thumb. Secondly, hitting the center button to change your mode, let alone switching from video to stills, is very cumbersome. Canon, where is that photo video switch that you've had on almost all of your cameras? Lastly, we need more RF lenses and we need them soon. Having the seamless adapter experience for EF to RF is great, but part of the whole reason of switching to mirrorless is to have even more lightweight and compact options. In conclusion, the Canon EOS R is definitely more than just a spec sheet. It's a glimpse into Canon's future with the new RF mount with their amazing lenses and new possibilities for camera control. It also shows their dedication to designing cameras that just make photography seem effortless. And it goes to show that 80 years of experience making cameras do still count for something. All right, folks, that is it. Thank you all for watching. Please visit slrlounge.com to read our full written review on the EOS R. And don't forget to click subscribe for more gear reviews and tutorials on photography. I'm Matt Seville. Thanks for watching. See you next time.